The world is changing. 51 years ago, the War of the Wilds came to a stalemate. The people of the Grainor Peninsula set all plant life ablaze to stop the stranglehold and built a mighty wall to keep the wilds at bay. All the while, they sat atop their monument, never truly knowing why this all began. A likeness of peace blanketed the blasted lands. One year ago, it all changed. An ancient god, once bound by old magic, found himself free and took his vengeance as his shackles were shattered. The mountainous city of Bulwark paid a grave price, but in the wake of this destruction comes the first glimpses of the possibility for true and honest peace. Our heroes venture from their familiar homeland into the fullness of what their world was before the war, a world they've touched but never truly seen. They find themselves caught between a land that has tried to end their lives hundreds of times over, and a country they helped decimate. Under the canopy, they seek glory, truth, and salvation. The world is changing, and their hands will guide it. Hello, and welcome to Another Path. My name is Chase, and I continue to be your GM. Today, our heroes get answers to long-held questions. Thank you to our backers, Everett, Joel, and Tyler for their support. With that, sit back, relax, and enjoy your trip down Another Path. There is an awkward moment of silence that passes as y'all just kind of look at each other and kind of play with your drinks. Eventually, Turbedo, the Erico Grub, speaks up. So, I imagine you are having a fair bit of questions. Um, yes. And Turbedo looks to um, his associates. We have decided to adopt a... How should I put this? policy of what did you describe it as grex and unbridled honesty yeah a, po- a policy of transparency yes that very good so whatever questions you have we are willing to answer to the best of our abilities i i guess the the first one is i guess um how did you find out that what happened was us, and why did you want us to come? Messus speaks up. That, that is a very long story that twists and turns throughout the history of our faith. We have a couple of days. It's fair. The very short answer is, <laughs> the lords of the forest were watching for this. The lords wanted this to happen. The lords knew you, Amarea de Jani. In some way or another, that they have not elaborated on. But this has been their goal from day one. Their goal, from the very beginning of the war, was to free you. Is that the purpose of the group of your people that we found in the Lumberton... The not, well, not ground. Outside, ground, yes. That operation was a... I should point out that we did not know about Amareya Dijani until very recently. That is a very important thing to note. Could you specify, possibly, how recently? Do you have, like, a date? Um, Like, like more or less than a year. The Lords informed us the day after the decimation that their goal here had largely been completed. At that point, they instructed us to try and begin diplomatic negotiations with the Grainor Peninsula in order to bring all sides together to forge a peace, including figuring out where Amareya Dejani had gotten to and to pull him here so that we could inform him on how he could regain his rightful throne on the Celestial Plane. So for 50 years, you waged a war lacking a purpose? No. For over a hundred years, we sought out something that we knew not what it was. Communication for deities is incredibly difficult, Amareya Dejani, I am sure. 
I am sure you can recall some aspect of this. I know your memory is a bit foggy from what it once was. But speaking from the celestial plane to this plane gets muddled. This is the advantage that the warlock patrons have over gods. Patrons are not as strong, but their presence is immediately felt. A god must work in mysterious ways, not because they want to, but because they must. Intention is often lost. What would the intent then be for the group of Yarrow worshippers burning effigies in the middle of the countryside? And trying to kill us. Or the individuals who hold up in forests outside of Despera waging similar plots. Or that assassinate the headmistress of the... Uh, um, uh, or the folks who academy. attempted to overgrow Plains Watch in a mess of Tangle. Messus leans back for a moment. I have no earthly idea what you are talking about. Turbedo, is any of this yours? You are the storm... You are the one who wages such... No. This is not my doing. We do go in and out like a storm, but we do not. Quite frankly, that isn't my style. I prefer open combat. Can I insight? Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I was going to ask the same question. Mm -hmm. Jesus. I. It's two bad 20s in a row. All right. Good. Okay. 17. It's an 18. 25? They are absolutely telling the truth. It's like we've prepared for this moment. It's like that. I mm -hmm. go into my pack, um, and I pull out the the weird snake tongue symbol. You pull out this ragged sheet of leather that you've been carrying around in your bag for over a year game time, like three years real time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The symbol has plagued us with each attack and each splinter cell that we have come across. You see Grex and Turbedo both look at this thing with disgust. Yeah, I know who they are. Lords. Damn it. These are the hunters. Yeah. They said something like that. Mark's hunting grounds if I remember properly. The Hunters are a extremist group. These are folks who diverged from our path long ago. They walked down a darker trail and sought more expeditious methods to try and seek out the original goals of the Lords. Once we were one family, but there was a schism so long ago that we frankly, did not record it well. And the hunters went one way and we went the other. We had heard that there was hunter activity over on your side, but... And Grex finishes up. But they were your problem. And we were fighting, so... We didn't really see a point of trying to rein them in. We ran them in over here. Well, just so... What would be the proper... Uh, collective, refer to your holinesses, your... Holiness is fine. Well, so you all are aware the majority of the civilians and the non-combatants where we come from, that is the face of this side of the wall. Mm. So, I, I believe your intentions for peace are genuine. Just know that if you're trying to ingratiate yourself with the populace, the, the, the collective conscious of our homeland, you're fighting an uphill battle because of this. You see Ligo, for the first time in all of this, start to move her hands um, in a pattern that you are entirely unfamiliar with. It's not magic, you know that. The speaker for the Tangle speaks up. It is understandable. We did not go into this situation thinking that it would be easy. Peace is never easy. 
War is easy. Fight the other person. That's fine. Some people, that's all they get. There is a pointed look over in Turbato's direction. But for others, peace is just simply something to acclimate to. And acclimate we will. This is better for all parties. We are tired of fighting. Could I ask a clarifying question uh, about uh, your lords? Absolutely. You said that they only recently told you the reason for your war. I guess I have two questions. One is uh, pretty straightforward, and the other is pretty theologically philosophical. Uh, and I, uh, uh, The first one is absolutely intended to be rude. The second one is not. Um, did they know that they were fighting for Amorea and wanted to free him? and just didn't tell you, or did they find out why they were doing what they were doing and then tell you? Messus looks at you without a smile on her face. Those are actually both incredibly reasonable questions. Okay, well, that was the first one. The second, oh, okay. one, was, the second one was more like, why would you listen to your lords? Do you listen to your forest lords all the time when they just give you vague instructions and don't tell you, like, specifics? How blind is your faith? That was not the rude one. That wasn't the rude one. Rude. Wow, that no. was not the rude one, huh? That was this <laughs> that is, was a little rude. This is me genuinely trying to understand. The, uh, serving one god, and I look at Amorea, who is mm -hmm. uh, pretty straightforward, um, has made me want to learn more about these other gods that are... Zephyr, uh, I need a better word than secretive and shady. I mean, those, those work. Um... Secretive and shady. DM, here's a question. Okay. Do do we who do we know who started the war? Because from where I, I was assuming it was Graynor that started it. That has been up to much debate. There okay. are people who because the war the war went on for about fifty years, and it was one of those things where it just kind of started one day, where plants started attacking and things started happening. And nobody was sure why, but for some reason, the plants and seemingly led by the lords just kind of started aggressions. Yeah. Now, that is not to say that there was not some sort of aggression on the side of the peninsula. Sure. But it has always yeah. been up to an incredible amount of debate, because as soon as the war started, effectively, martial law went in across the entire peninsula. You see, and, I, I, I thought I, I've always at least kind of been operating under the assumption that it was like the plan started of att started attacking the peninsula figured it's the wilds mm -hmm. and so launched counterattack, mm -hmm. even if it wasn't them that's, you know, sent the sure. plants and yeah, that preemptive strike out. kind of situation. Exactly. That, that's kind of what I always thought happened. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how accurate that is. So they have always known they have not always been able to point to something and say yes that that will only happened after it was done because we and you will find this out as soon as master amorea dejani ascends as i said it gets muddled quickly as soon as they start to speak through the veil that is a sentiment that i think we can understand yeah. fucking beach balls <laughs> <Boys. Hey. laughs> that is what we were working with we were working with a very limited information they had given us names for things that we were seeking Amare Dejani had several names before we were able to truly put his name to it the god of dragons of course that one's pretty on the nose the forge the creative path, the restoration of natural order. All of these terms we had, but we did not know how literal some were and metaphorical others were, until a dragon exploded out of the top of the capital city of our opposition, who had long refused to meet with us. Yeah, that'll do it, I guess. If I may ask, when the war started... We have, on our side, heard several theories and stories and opinions on what truly happened. I, I would be interested in hearing yours. The information that we had is that 
frankly, one day I woke up with my fellows at the time, and we had been given a missive in our dreams that the wilds were going to be attacking, and that we were to attack with them. That peace was an unlikely option. If we could take it, we should. But that Graynor would likely not allow it. That Graynor would fight to protect the disruption of the natural order until his dying breath. So the lords sent the plants and told you to follow. Correct. At the moment, the time they did not give you the reason why, but we are assuming it is for Amorea? They told us it was to restore the natural order. Which we now know to be a uh, different way of referring to what he can do. Uh, Even if it wasn't to free him, it was to free his power. Exactly. Well, most of it. That comes later. That is next, after we are done answering your questions. Because we know where the rest of his power is being held. It's just a matter of getting him there. Understood. <sighs> Are there any other questions? Probably. That was that, was, that was Ryan. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> that <laughs> that was that was Mordecai. Mordecai, yeah, just dozens, but um. We're trying to form them, trying to form them in ways that are uh, less angry. Granted, a lot, a lot of my anger has subsided with the fact that those that we have been faced against are not necessarily a part of, I guess, your jurisdiction. No, some of them. Some of them. Some of them. I'll kind of look at the at, at Mordecai and uh, Saphir and say. We uh, are obviously interested and will be around for the peace talks. And looking at Amorea, uh, we certainly would like to see him restored to his full potential. We are slightly concerned, as word has reached our ears, of certain factions here amongst Lee that uh, may wish to see... These talks not to go as well as we would all like them to go. Um, could you speak to that at all? And Jackson's just very much trying to be like, I'm not going to say anything specific and just kind of see what they, they've been very free and open so far. And I kind of want to test them to see if they lie. Just what they'll give us. Yeah. What they'll give us. That's what I'm going for. All four of them kind of uniformly as if they are a group of four, of four people who have known each other for a decently long time shift awkwardly in their seats in almost the exact same way um but it is Ligo who begins to motion first and Agus speaks yes yes there is a faction within the city uh those who uh, tend to work on the more commercial side uh who may not oppose this meeting and our meetings going any specific way, uh, but do seek to have a greater seat within the city itself. They are motivated by uh, not necessarily the good of the individual, but by the greed of having control of a major city and what could soon to be a massive nation, depending on how the talks go, because that is certainly something that we would be considering. So it's a class struggle. Yes, effectively. And if not a class struggle, uh, certainly a uh, theology versus commerce struggle. Such things are wants to happen anywhere, but this one is getting a little more heated than usual. Their leader is an individual known as Mantellum. He is a, a, a very a potent mage, somebody I am sure individuals from your side would actually be incredibly interested to sit down and meet with. We would love to have him at the table, but as an ally, he has instead chosen to uh, take his own route, as it were. Have you attempted to reach out to him? Many times. He is 
entirely disinterested in meeting with us in person. He speaks only through messengers and through occasional guild members who will say snide things in his stead. Do you believe they have any interest in disrupting ceremonies surrounding Amare Dejani? No. No. We have no reason to believe that he knows that Amare Dejani exists. We have been relatively low-key with our knowledge of him, and I know, with the exception of one or two sermons, Amare Dejani has also been about as low-key as he could be as well. We have taken measures to disguise him and travel incognito. These are measures we appreciate. They will not be needed going forward beyond here unless you decide to take an incredibly different route than we advise. You will not be seeing civilization again until he has his power restored. I'm concerned Sorry, can I insight check? Was that a threat? I mean, you can roll for it. If you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 19. No, but it's a fucking weird thing to say. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, it was a weird thing to say. Okay. It just came out... I don't know why it sounded like a threat. It just set off something in me. I'm concerned. We've heard a little bit about Mantellum. Whispered things here and there as we were preparing it to come into the city. Technically not a lie. Uh, <laughs> I'm concerned if he... If the whispers, if he is as power hungry and ladder climbing as rumors suggest that he is, I'm worried that if he hears about Amare Dejani, all he's going to see is a power well. And would, from everything that I've heard, and he's brazenly been climbing toward the top. Who's to say how what limitations there are on his brazenness? For what the next step would require, if he were to be to ascend to be anything beyond more than a tabaxi, I should say, then he would already need to be more than a tabaxi. I'm not suggesting he's going to try to hijack Amarea's godhood. I'm saying he's going to try to take hold of whatever power that Amorea has, and bend Amorea to his own devices. You've already said it yourselves, he's an incredibly competent mage, and we ourselves have seen what incredibly competent mages can do to the minds of others. Bad stuff. We already know that the people in Greynor had the ability to restrain and imprison Amorea once. He is the head of the spellcasters united beyond the wall. Then I am glad that you recognize the exact level of danger that you are in by staying in the city. I think Mordecai physically shakes his head. He's just like, like, sits back, like, I can't talk to you right now. It's, we are doing everything we can to guard this place. He has never gotten even close to attacking the temple itself. We do not anticipate any further issues from him. That's because he doesn't know what's here yet. No, he doesn't, and we don't intend on telling him. Whether you tell him or not, if he's as powerful as you say, he's going to find out. We do have this place boarded, you know. This is not our first time out. I'm not going to stand here and say that we know all the tricks up his sleeve. But please take into mind that we are not in our positions because we're very good at having our thumbs up our asses. (laughs) That's not the point we are trying to make. We're not here to belittle you or tell you you don't, you are not prepared. We, I guess... A, a lot of information has been passed back and forth, and frankly, my, my brain is a little fried. Um, so I will leave this here um, in that we are Amorea's honor guard. Yes. Jackson, our captain. I, I guess a, a point to make very clear here, I know that your lords are very eager to see his full return. And as are you on their behest. But we are not here to surrender him to your jurisdiction. We would never ask that. Just wanted that to be in the open. Amareya Dejani is a sovereign deity. What happened to him underneath Bulwark is vile. Yes. It is the darkest magics. And it is the only argument I have ever seen that would even begin to 
cons- allow me to consider what Graynor did a reasonable restriction. It wasn't. But I can follow the line. All right, well, uh, as long as that's understood, um, I don't have any other questions for now. Like I said, I'm sort of dead up here. Um, I don't know if you have any questions for us. Um, Do any of you have any further questions? We'll we'll move on from there. Mordecai is biting his tongue. Jackson is doing his best to defer to Amare. Can I get a... Can I insight check Amarea just to kind of get a feel of where he's at without actually having to say anything? Go for it. It seems like a... Yeah, it's like a gut check on my boss. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Hey, hey you good check? Hey, you good check? Oh my god, I I should only ever roll insight, apparently. 23. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Amarea obviously has been silent this entire time. He is just leaning forward, his hands clasped, his eyes closed his head resting on his hands, and he is just listening. Listening to all of this go on. All of this for me. (sighs) It's not just for you, but you're a big part of it. It's for our countries. It's for our people. It's so that what happened to you and what happened to me and every other mage that has been born on our side of the wall and Any person on this side who has ever been hunted by people on our side do not have to go through that anymore. Balit speaks up. So, so all of this, all of everything, was to get him out. When was the last time you tried to get a hold of somebody? And Grex speaks up. We tried sending about an emissary about once a year. They'd get run off or killed. Soon as that wall went up, that was all over for us. Like we could, at that point, it was it was covert missions only. <laughs> and you said this has been going on for how long? The actual infighting, like the plants and whatnot, that's been, I mean, going strong for about fifty years. They've been looking for Amarea Dejani for a couple hundred at this point. Seems like this was actually their last-ditch attempt. <laughs> That's the thing. Wasn't even us that did it. You did it. You got him out. Well, yeah, we did. We didn't. We didn't know. We no. Didn't no. We were. No. You walked out. backwards into it. You walked backwards into the will of gods. And I don't know how to reckon with that. Honestly, I don't. See, I feel more like. I was sort of picked up by the scruff of the neck and just sort of, like, drug along. That's that Graynor way. They do a lot of neck dragging over there. Yep. But that last bit, I... And this is going to be a longer discussion that we that I would love to sit down with a beer with you boys and figure out. And at this point, Messis gives Grex a look. But I give him a look. Like, <laughs> who the fuck are you, dog? I want to know what happen because we got a little bit like we knew about the right of Aegis we knew that you know something was going on something was threatening the patrons and turns out that was the hunt but we lose and I mean this with all sincerity we lose all information as soon as you enter Bulwark as soon as you got to Bulwark we don't know what happened we have some good spies, but the spies don't exactly, uh, you know, the further up that mountain you go, they, you know, kind of started disappearing. <laughs> up the mountain. You think we went up the mountain? I mean, you had to. You you started to. Because you were up at the top for a little while. We know that much. Because your folks they... live up there, right? You got to Bulwark, and then, because of what happened, we lost... The further up the mountain you go, the more information we don't have because they didn't make it. And we're not going to be here or there discussing casualties of war. But it's the reality of the situation. To bring us back then, what do you want us to do? Because you just said that we are we're not specifically invited for the peace talks. We understand we're welcome and we're sticking around, but we understand... 
now that that is not our purpose here, according to you. No, it is not. Turbedo moves to a window to the east and uh, pulls open the curtain and lets a stream of daylight in. Do you see beyond the city, that forest over there, and the mountains further beyond? Do we? You do, as a matter of fact. Although the forest is interesting, um, it is, even though you are in the dead of winter, it is golden, amber, and bright orange... And we heard about this from someone. The autumnal line. It is not a nice place, and that is putting it lightly. It has uh, taken many lives. We have done limited research, although those that have done the most research into it are those who have allied with the mages, and they are not currently speaking to us. Beyond the autumnal line sits the mountain range, The last wall of the wilds. Within the mountain range, there is a temple to Amorea Dejani. It is, and he looks at Amorea Dejani, a little ostentatiously shaped like a dragon. (laughs) It's a little ostentatious, I will admit. Good work, boss. But it was known back in the day as the Crucible of Light. It was his home temple when the power of Amorea Dejani was taken from him when he was shackled. It was experimented on for a time and then moved to his temple for safekeeping. They knew it would be safe because without the light of Amorea Dejani to guide people, the autumnal line became very deadly and it will be a dangerous trek. We have an individual that will be more than happy to show you through. They are one of us, and they are aware of at least a part of the situation. A powerful sorcerer. You will be in excellent hands of this, I swear to you. What about Chiron? Chiron is... is a good scout. Yeah, seems made for the job. It's not... That kind of danger you'll be running into. The place is some kind of an arcane energy. It's been described many ways, a walking nightmare. Hmm. Seems fine. An unseely gate, some people have said. A roiling of dark powers. I don't know what it is, or what happened there, to cause it to be this way. But it is a place that you will need some sort of arcane assistance to get through. And we do have some people that specialize in navigating it for the rare occasion we need to make our way over to the mountain. And as he finishes talking, there's a knock at the door. Send him away. Any further questions? Who is, Just kind of look at the door. Yeah, like Who is that? I have no earthly idea. But this is a private conversation, and they do not need to be a part of it. So, so you send them us, away. What was so it? You, you want us here to to? We're gonna. I'm confused. The knocking is kind of disturbing or distracting. Or I'm. What? <laughs> Kyron. And the door bursts open, and Mo launches into the room. Uh oh. I want to know who in here was in charge of knocking down my warehouse downtown. Who did it? I lean over to Zephyr Jackson and very quietly say, Well, I guess it wasn't him. Master Mo, if you could please take a moment to collect yourself. We are meeting with dignitaries. I said somebody's knocking down. And he catches your eye, Mordecai. No, I'm doing this. I'm hiding my eyes with my hands. Uh-huh. I'm simply doing that. For those of you, for those of you listening yep. at home, Griffin is in fact hiding his I'm... eyes from Chase uh, nope. in an attempt to increase the DC of this check. <laughs> his eyes glance over Mordecai, but they land on Jackson, and he just kind of looks for a minute. Look, look. I know. I know y'all know what was going on at Stout last night. That's well and good and fine. But what that happened there was dirty and underhanded. 
You took an opportunity and you murdered a lot of people. I'm not here to start any kind of new rabble. But I do want you to know that I've got my eyes on you. And when you're ready to talk, y'all can send a message to me. I'll be at the shop most of today trying to organize removing of the dead. You all have a pleasant evening. And he walks out. I know it's morning. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Jackson immediately turns to Grex and goes, who was that? Yeah, don't worry about him. He's His name's Mo. He, uh... He's got a key to the steps, apparently. He's the head of the Builder's Guild, so he is one of the... Oh, he's got a key to Exactly. He's the only person we really allow to actually look around in here when we're not around, so it is an oversight that maybe we should consider (sighs) looking into going forward if he's getting friendly with Montellum, but never mind that. So if you want us to go to out past the Altumna line to find Amorea's temple... And restore him. That's all well and good, but that sounds like something that's going to take more than a day to do. And we understand that maybe we aren't explicitly needed for these peace talks, but we are explicitly needed for these peace talks. We'd very much like to be there, yes. Honestly, at this point, it is whatever time frame you would choose to operate on. I understand you want to be here for this. In your situation, I would be too. You are welcome in this house of our lords for as long as you choose to stay. Thank you. I would ask that you try not to overstay your welcome. It is a very important thing. I don't have to impress that upon you. No, you do not have to impress that upon us. It's fine. But We understand. There's a lot of big things (laughs) happening. But I've made a mess. I appreciate this now. I did not I made a mess. And I need to do whatever I can to make amends. Is that Amore? Yeah. How long of a journey is this supposed to be? Let me... How long should it take? If everything goes perfect in according to Chase is going to check his map. Just about a week. Maybe a little less if you move quickly. The line is dangerous. But you will have the best help that can be got. I think that, right. and I kind of look around and try to take the temperature of the room. I think that we're not going to get any farther right now. No. It has been a long journey, and uh, perhaps we can reconvene privately and come at it fresh again in the morning. Certainly. Certainly. You are, of course, welcome to come and go as you please. There is an additional exit, a few additional exits from the building that um, the Major Domo will be more than happy to show you to once you have been seen to your rooms, should you need to leave for whatever reason. Um, the run of the city is, of course, yours. Much appreciated. Of course. Please. With that, Messis stands up and claps her hands twice. And uh, Panat returns to the room as if by magic opening the door. If you will all please come with me. I you know well, I think we all follow. Absolutely. All five of us at yes, this point yes. because Kyron's gone. Rip Kyron. I like Kyron. Like, like he's Kyron. not dead. He's Rip around. Kyron. He's just around with his metal hand. And you are taken up. Let me double check here. One, two, three, four flights of stairs to your quarters. You have an incredible view of the city from up here. Because you are up a total of eh, probably about a hundred feet off the ground. The room itself is designed in kind of a suite style. Um, there are six rooms leading off of a, a central room and each one is, there, there are small, a little cramped, but each of them does, uh, have a very nice bed, a writing desk and a bureau for you to put whatever gubbins you would like in. Panat looks at you all very good so gentlemen you will have uh uh whenever you uh would like um uh if you uh need anything for any reason uh if you pull the bell right here next to the stairs myself or one of my associates will be with you shortly 
Understood. And unless anybody holds him back, Penitus takes his leave. I was going to say, I'm, I'm going to grab a piece of paper and just write down a hold up the sign that says, Listening Devices? Mordecai does immediately as, like, he's distinctly not saying anything. His mouth is, like, taut, and he just, like, is like, mm -hmm, go, Panat, like, get out of here in his head. He, as soon as that door closes, he marches over to one of the beds, grabs a pillow, and just goes... It's okay, let it out. Uh, bail it. Can you, uh... Can you check? Uh, he nods, and he begins to move around the room. It's going to take him a couple of minutes to check. I'll help him out with ma magic guys. Yep, absolutely. Um, yeah. You you magic guys. Um, the rope is magic. The pole rope. Oh, gotcha. For the bell. Yep. Sure. The yeah. The bell rope is magic. You do see hints of magic around the room. They appear to be... It's it, it's funny because you you point them out and uh, Baylet looks in a little bit closer and between the two of you, you can realize that these are non-detection spells so that you cannot be scried in here. Oh, great. Oh, awesome. The, Fantastic. Uh, these actually... Yeah, yes. This is the opposite. Like, exactly. This opposite is, of what we were worried about. This is about. the safest we've felt since... Ever. Yeah, since, since you all met. Pretty much. Like, maybe except for, I don't know, I felt pretty safe on that boat the planes launched. Like, mm. nothing was getting us there. <laughs> way, way back when. Boat. Can we go back to that boat, guys? Way back, the way back boat. Um, so, like, we get the we get the thumbs up from everyone yeah. from Baylit and Sophia? Absolutely. All right. Who? Fuck those guys. What the fuck? Oh, God. my guys. What? Oh, Mordecai what? sticks his tongue out and it's like like there's a little bit of blood. Like I, I turn to Baylet and go, Hey, does your wall make more sense now? <sighs> or is it worse? Like I I genuinely want to know. This wasn't even on the wall. Great, I need great, a new great, wall. Great, 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 great. Well we've got like 30 of them in these rooms. We just learned so much. Wow. I did not think I would be this upset. I, th uh, I think I may be uh, the odd person out here, and I don't want it to sound like I agree with them because I don't. Starting a war for this sh shit is, is is. It seems a little uh, ex well, an exaggeration. Like I was not happy down there, but it seems like a lot. Uh, but I, I sort of understand. The Greynors locked Amorea away for centuries, and. Oh. For sure. The Forest Lords tried everything they could. They sent delegates, they tried to communicate, and Graynor shut them out. It was... I'm very upset with Graynor, too. Oh, yes. And I think I'll... I don't think I've said these words out loud in the year or so since it's happened. I'm glad he's dead. Oh, I am as well. Um, I don't agree, but I understand. Just because Graynor did bad things doesn't mean that they also haven't done bad things, and I understand that's the whole point. Shitting on somebody's shit sandwich doesn't make it not taste like shit. Thank you, Johnny. This is why we keep Johnny around, also because he's a god, but... Keep Johnny around. Really good one-liners. Really succinct wisdom. It's his... It's like he's a god. It's like I am it's a god. But apparently that is going to become much more muddled here in a few days or weeks, so... I don't know if anybody's keeping track of... Uh, should I be... Should I be repenning a, a, a holy book of some kind? Seems like. I'm Ugh. not writing it for you, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will dictate, but I'm not writing it down. It's done, but fair. We'll have Gary do it. I just, I... Mm. Can I... Okay, okay hold on. Uh, is there alcohol in the room yet, or do I need to pull the magic rope? There is, as a matter of fact. Great, I go find the strongest thing and pour all five of us three each. <laughs> It is a bracing burn. It's got some cinnamon in there. Mm, that was tasty, but oh. They served their fucking royal dignitaries fireball? What is this? Look, cinnamon's kind of hard to get sometimes. I get Fireball's it. delicious. Yeah. Not for me. No, not for you. Once you have a guy, once you got a cinnamon guy, you're set. The cinnamon guy is on the other side of the world. Ex exactly. Yeah, so, yeah, Mordecai takes his drink, he pounds it, and just sort of is is just restlessly pacing back and forth in sort of the central room. All right, so I guess let, let us focus in and sort of... 
Oh boy. All right. Where do you? All right, boys. Where do we? Where do we start? Like. All right. All right. All right. He pounds the second drink. Baylet pounds his third and sits down. Baylet. Yeah. Baylet. Yeah. Wall. Get the string. Um. He opens up. Um. One of the unoccupied rooms in your suite tosses the cube in and pulls the pin out and it springs out gimbal who had gotten sucked in last time (laughs) shoots out of there and disappears himself now that he is not in a pocket dimension and he takes the y side with him oh no the y side flutters down very picturesquely lands in between you all. That's a damn good question. Alright, oh. let's get the easy shit out of the way first. One, we're sticking with Amorea through the peace talks, yeah? Hell yeah. Of course. Cool. Two, we're absolutely being the ones on this escort job to your Crucible Temple place, right? I've come this far. Cool. Without question. Cool. We super distrust whoever they're sending along with us, right? Oh yeah. Cool. We're bringing Kyron, right? Uh, I want to bring Kyron. If if they're gonna zag on us with a a, a surprise sorcerer, I want to zag on them and bring Kyron. Kyron's got a metal hand. He's basically an acolyte now. Frankly, I don't know if he'll come with us if we don't pay, and I don't really have the money to pay him. My mom will be here. I'll write him a check. <laughs> I mean, look, we can put a message out to him and see if he would like to come. I I am not opposed to Kyron coming in the slightest. I don't think that uh, we can take that that agency away from him. And also, if it's as dangerous as it sounds, like, Kyron's a tough dude, but... All right. This this sounds different. Point point taken. We'll we'll table that for now. That and, like... Kyron, like, he, like, knows, like, the land and stuff, which was why he was very helpful. But, like, I don't know what he'd be like in a fight, honestly. Yeah, that big old crossbow. Yeah. It's all right. All right, we'll table it for... We'll think about it. I just worry about his safety. Like... I I feel you. I'm just... I'm having the same feelings that happened just before and during and after we met with the king ah. where I'm I'm suspicious of everything and waiting for us to get screwed over because we are this isn't as apt as it, should, as I, as it is but behind enemy lines right we we do not know everything and I almost, wa- I almost at the start of that conversation thought that we were going to become, have them become beholden to us in a little bit, for a little bit, because they wanted to know we had information they wanted. I thought, I was hoping. Yeah. But turns out they fucking knew everything the whole time. Up until Well, they didn't, Bulwark. but they didn't. Apparently, because the lords didn't <sighs> yeah. clue them in for 50 years. But like about us, like they knew what, ever since, the, from the right of Aegis to Bulwark. It seemed like they had a finger on the pulse of everything we were doing. Aside from, when, conveniently, the times we got attacked by forces of the Forest Lords. Or at the very, at the very least, they knew it now. They might not have known it actively. They got it after Maybe. the fact. They've had a year to do recon, to put the pieces together. Yeah, I yeah, you're right. But how do they completely miss the Hunters? I don't know. That's just bad leadership. Yes. Or it's active evasion, active uh, uh, ignoring. It is easy for those in power to sweep aside unfortunate events. We know that with C-34. Yeah, and I was... mm. All right. The big questions that we need to ask right now are... We're staying... It's not a question. We're staying for... The peace talk. At least most yeah. of them. Peace talk. Peace talks first, or at least this is the start of it. At some point, it's going to devolve into math, and I don't think any of us really want to sit around for who it, gets what bales of grain. At least for opening statements, you know, make our stance on this subject mm-hmm. a sort of strange neutral ground known. Something. And then we can head out on this journey and. Hopefully by the time we return, things will be wrapping up, yes? He was hoping. 
Agreed. I mean, I don't think they would divide up grain, would they? Depends on how much detail they go into. I mean, I don't think we'd be... We're not turning into one country, are we? Just... I don't know. That's you, fair. I've been with you guys. I haven't been a part of even preliminary talks. I think there's a conversation about a wall coming down before, far before there's a conversation about a unified country. That's fair. I guess, yes. So we have we have may, a day or two until those from Graynor get here. Mm. What do we yeah. wish to do with those two days? If we've got I some downtime, got I want to throw it out there. I would like to get my tattoos redone. You know that? I'm down. That sounds like a good time. I miss them. <laughs> that was really cute, sorry. <laughs> I'm actually I'm actually really on board for that. Yeah. There might be a way where I can get in touch with the Wanderer. Yeah, you brought that up once before. That sounds very yeah, dangerous. How's that? That's I, always really hit or miss, Mordecai. I know his real name. Okay. And he told me that names have power, and especially with fiends, to, yeah, a little. to the to the right person, yeah, that okay. that name would mean a lot. And sorry, I'm I'm in my my head is stuck in find the upper hand mode. That I feel like that's part of our training, sort of kicking in. Yeah, I mean, and I mean, conspiracy is a big part of my training. And I mean, and this is coming from me. I feel that I'm trying to go into this as with as much openness and understanding as possible. Because if we really want a lasting peace, that's what we need. We need to understand each other's sides and what caused the sequence of events that got us here. And then understand what we need to change so that things can move forward. I just need a little bit of time to sift through everything we just heard. I realize, yes, definitely. My dad wrote the book on making mountains out of molehills, so... What was the name of the book? Making Mountains Out of Molehills, the Salix the Bulwark story. Oh, oh was it semi-autobiographical? Uh, okay. No, it's really just kind of, this is a bit, what were you going to say? <laughs> 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 just hear me out before you, you weigh comment. The last time we took drug bugs, we sort of got a lot of very valuable insight. You all have talked about these drug bugs before. Hey, shush, 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 we only have three. What? No, what we are haven't. they? They're hallucinogenic bugs. They're drug bugs. So they do what they say on the tin. That we that you brew into tea. And Can I see them? Is this Bailet or Amaraic? Bailet. 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 I'm all, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, last time when... I, I surrender my I, drug bug to Amaraya. <laughs> no, I, I think Jackson has them, actually. Yeah, I think... Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. You uh, I pull out uh, from a uh, breast pocket that is a secret pocket sewn <laughs> into the lining of, like, my inner shirt, tucked tucked away very, very carefully. Like, I have to unzip two things and unbutton another thing. And I pull out just the stankiest baggie. Yeah. Whatever this is, Chase has been sitting on this for months. It's, there is a thin sheen of sweat. Ugh. It yeah. does not yeah. smell appetizing. They are smushed, and I, I very gingerly. Yeah, actually, you might um, have a, a unique perspective on this because last yeah, time you because they're I, offerings to my patron. Well, yeah, yeah, <laughs> they sort of um, kind of guided us last time in a very weird way. He takes out his own box, a very nice box, and opens them up, and he's got five of these things in pristine condition. My God. pristine condition, I love it. Oh man, that's got to be a that's got to be a better high. Some some quality pure Laradian uncut drug bugs. Golden inspiration. Zafir, you're you're right. I was gonna say something, but. I mean, you've raised an excellent point. Like, that's when we first heard about Amber. I was tripping balls. Yeah. I mean, granted, we were almost murdered afterwards, but... Frankly, we went into the first drug bugs with this sense of recreation. If we go into this with the sense of fact-finding... Getting shit done. Then maybe the maybe it hits different. Also, I want to be I a, 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 a radio producer again, whatever that is. I don't, still don't know what that is. I asked my mom, even she doesn't know. 
whatever it is, either I can come with you or I can keep an eye on you. I know, I know this is an engrossing situation, he says, closing his box of golden inspiration. Carrie has a way of showing things that we need to see, but even they don't know exactly what they're seeing, or they didn't. It's been... Well, it's been everything went down since I've decided to try it. Carrie's power grew by leaps and bounds that day, as I'm sure the Deeps did as well. Yeah, a little. And I'm, frankly... I'm a little scared to try again because I was able I'm I'm excited. It's it's going to get weirder. Well, it's just like last time Kerry was like literally like latched to me and now I don't really have any connection to them at all. So I don't will it work? You would know, you're an expert. At this point Baylet turns to the other two. You still Mordecai you still feel a connection with the Wanderer. A little bit, yeah. And the General, I'm guessing. You still feel it there. I cast a Produce Flame in my hand, and it still has a little bit of the, like, very, very, uh, uh, um, I don't know the right word, just... It's a little spicy. Yeah, in the core of the flame, it's it's like, instead of the, like, yellow, orange, red, it just burns red in the center, too. That's a little bit of that leftover heat. Jackson... I don't have to ask you about how your connections with your patrons has evolved over time. They're all right. We see <laughs> and have seen evidence of it. Yeah. Zephyr, I promise you, Carrie hasn't let you go. The sleeping seer, the awakened seer. Oh. Oh. Oops. No. Hey, that w we oh, did it. Oh, yes, hey, we, we did do it. We that wasn't weren't us, supposed right? to wake him up. We total. That was we totally woke us, him up, Yeah. We woke him up. Oh, we up a mountain. no. Fuck. And that is in character and out of character. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck indeed. I, you're right. I was initially going to dismiss it, Zephyr, but honestly, if we've got... The only other thing I could think of is is meeting with Mo. I mean, that's a, that's a, a, a good one as well. Um, but like, I I'm, think again, you might have recognized me. I'm not sure, though. I wasn't the greatest spy, but I know double speak when I hear it. So, oh yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I we could meet with Mo. I've got to get my armor. Right. I still think our priorities should be Amaria first, obviously. Like yes. I, I, again, getting involved in this civil, not a civil war, civil struggle Dispute. is not. It's yeah. It's it's secondary. It's tertiary. Even like it's not our fight. If if Mantellum starts stepping, and he becomes like a public danger, then maybe we could interfere. It, or it would if make he does sense anything for us. to interfere with Amorea. Right. It would make perfect sense for us to step in and do something about it. But until then, I'm cool with letting him just kind of sit on the side for now until he becomes a legitimate threat. Oh, that's not our job. Us. No, not at all. Yeah, until it becomes our job, I yeah. say we. Back off that one. Um, so I'm... I'll vote drug bugs. Tattoos and drug bugs? Tattoos and drug bugs. I, I, I'm i good with tattoos and drug bugs, guys. I do want to... I don't want to bring the room down here, but... Yeah, go ahead. Maybe... Man, it, I'm, well, I like the idea of not uh, dealing with Mantellum and the whole thing if we don't have to, if he doesn't come after the Peace Talks or Amorea. Like, those are our things. If he doesn't come after those, then it's fine and we can just let him do what he wants. But if we do that, I mean, that's that's basically what the, the priestesses did for the hunters on our side. They just kind of ignored it and said it wasn't their problem when they could have done something about it. And I, it's not our problem, but we've got a lot of blood on our hands already. Definitely. It's just a question of do we overstep our bounds? And if Mantellum and his ilk were like secret Grainorian rogue black ops, then I'd say, yeah, it, it's something that we could step into. But I mean, you might want to check with your mom and make sure he's not. 
I mean, honestly, that crossed my mind with the with the hunters that if actually before I before I make stuff up, GM, would I even know of even hinted at deeper level intelligence operatives beyond what my dad is? You know that there are some. You know your dad is not the top of that particular totem pole. You know that there have been deep cover ops into different cities over here, but you never heard any specifics. But, like, even hints of, like, the type of organization that, like, the government would deny its existence. The king would deny its existence. Oh, absolutely. So, hopping back into that, I mean, it's all kind of rumor and hearsay, but there have been, there's stories, there's whispers of people who do shit that, you know, is sanctioned by the crown, but that the crown would never acknowledge so they can stay... They can plausible deniability, right? Part of me, part of me isn't convinced that the hunters aren't that, and that's I don't know. They seem genuine in their shock, but I don't know. I don't know. What? It's possible that another side of this did that just without the priest's knowledge, the bishop's or their knowledge. predecessors. They yeah. might have been put yeah. in motion earlier. But Nessus was still around. But what I will say is. I, I I believe you, you, you brought this up a moment ago, Mordecai. When it came to the hunters, that was the wilds, uh, their people, whether or not they wanted it or not, in a foreign yeah. land. This is a discrepancy between the people and their own government. I don't I don't think I disagree with it. I just think that I think that we've gotten involved in so many other things that if there's a if there's something happening that we're not you know sticking our heads into we need to be clear that we're not going to do it unless we're forced i i think that's what we're all sitting on the situation yes i can i i can sleep with that i can sleep well with that all right so new rabble timeline over the next we two, we can't we can't use that name. That's not a public name. But I don't want to use the other one. We, ages three of your ages three of your Ahem. timeline. The group formerly known as the Ages Three. Ages Three, the former Ages Three plus Bailey Taram and Amareya Dejani. How about just timeline? Ages? How about what? just Ages? The Ages. Yeah, there we go. I mean, I mean, Shield. Sure. There we. go. All right. So. Yeah. Yeah. Ages timeline. Yeah. For the rest of this afternoon, it, it, do we make the rest of the day tattoos and drug bugs day? I think so, because I don't think if we're gonna if we're gonna be intoxicated and out of it, we want to do that but as early on as, as possible. possible. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. All right. So yes. So okay. we we grab. We don't want to be hung. We don't. We don't want to be hung over when Mordecai's mom shows up. That's yeah, last fact. time that I I had that that gave me like cold sweats for a couple of days uh, mm-hmm. after the the first one. Um, I went in as a dog. Hard. I was like, I was getting some like dog leftovers. Yeah. It was weird. Uh, so, get lunch, hydrate <laughs> <laughs> with water. With water. <laughs> with water. I will take it easy. Tattoos. Come back. Drug bugs. Uh, then tomorrow, perhaps go talk with Mo a little. Did we, did, no, that's part of the Mantellum stuff, so we're leaving that alone. Let's let's leave that on the side. Do we that. want to go fight a little? Have a new few new rabble matches? I think if we do that, then uh, we could win a couple more matches and then reveal ourselves for who we are. Because at that point, it'll kind of be an open secret. I think so. Let's let's. And let's... I imagine if we do that, even if we don't do that, I imagine Mo at least. Is going to try to find us. Mo's going to have questions for us, definitely. So, two, over two days miscellaneous activities. Eh? I just, I can't help but think that the stuff we, we figure, if, if things that we may figure out during drug bugs may then influence the following day. That's why I said miscellaneous activities. All right. Boom. Until the arrival of the Graenorian retinue. The delegation should show up in two days. We meet, we greet, we schmooze. 
Mm-hmm. We attend the opening ceremonies and statements yep. of the peace talks. We put our opinion Do our due out diligence. there. Um, maybe we can. Maybe during all of that, we can uh, get to know our guide a little bit more. Yes. Yeah. That would be great. This new one, and we can find, track Chiron down to see if he wants to go with. I'm gonna grill uh, this guard. And uh, I've got to get my armor. You got to pick your up your armor. armor. So yes, miscellaneous. DM, can I do that today? Yes. Or is that tomorrow? Uh, okay. yeah, it'll be. It would be later today. Lastly, following um our attendance and participation in the opening sort of speeches, we will begin the journey to the autumnal line. Sounds like most of a plan. Hey, Almaria. Yes. So, Amareya, when we go to your temple here and we restore you to your power, are we done? Do What do you mean? Do we come back what? here? Do we... Where do we go? Or do we just... Do you just live out there now? I won't be here anymore, Jackson. You, you heard that. End. I will go to the celestial plane. I will exist where I am meant to be, and the natural order will be restored. And as far as you being done, no, of course not. Eventually, my ascension will be just another thing that happened. Another chapter in your life, and you will continue living. Now, we should probably stop talking about secret things. I think they're coming down with lunch soon. All right. Let's do it. You all disperse and go to your individual rooms. Mark has a thought that hasn't been, that hasn't left him yet, though. Um, reach into his vest pocket and pull out Hugo. Uh huh. And um, through the ring of animal influence on my finger, I will cast Animal Messenger. Okay. And say, hey, buddy. Yeah. I need you to go find the. Shifter Archbishop mm. Grex. Mm-hmm. Tell him that sometime tomorrow I'd like to take him up on that drink. You got it, boss. Thanks, buddy. And I'll scratch his tiny head mm-hmm. and set him down on the floor. He pops down and bolts on off. I would love to see. I would love to get to see Grex's face when he, this mouse just goes, "Hey, <laughs> <laughs> hey, pal." Okay. Hey. Jackson, did you have anything else specific you wanted to do? <sighs> or do you just kind of, like, compress? Um, are we at the top of the temple, or are we, like, halfway up, two-thirds of the way up? You're just under halfway up. But well, this thing's massive. Yeah. So okay. Do we have a balcony or anything? Uh, no, there are some pretty wide windows. Jackson is pretty shaken. Yeah. Because he didn't realize this was going to be goodbye. Yeah. And I think he just stays pretty quiet for a while. And he actually just goes over and sets up by the the biggest window with the most light he can find and just just tries to meditate. Zephyr, anything yeah. specific you do? Um, I think he's just going to take a load off for a second. Okay. That's fine. You um you dip into your room or the room that uh, was at least pointed out to you as yours. It is like the other ones, except of course for the fact that there is a, a bottle of port sitting on the desk. Awesome. Do you uh, do you grab a drink from there? I will. Yeah. You grab a drink, pour yourself a glass, and you sit down on the bed. And as you sit down, there is a crunch, a slight one, like you sat on some paper. You S- get and- up. Yeah, you investigate it, and it's under a sheet of uh, under one of the blankets. But there is a folded piece of paper. You open it, and spread across it is some writing that you weren't expecting because you really haven't encountered it here. Zeros and ones running across the paper that coalesce to form letters in your language. You are chosen. By the deep, we can help, tear and burn if needed. The Order of the Deep Forest. What? Thank you for joining us here on Another Path. You can find our website and merch store at anotherpathpodcast.com, on Twitter at anotherpathpod, and our network 
at ghostlightmedia.net. You can support our efforts by donating at patreon.com slash ghostlightmedia. A special thanks to our donor, Nathan N., or by giving us a rating or review over on Apple Podcasts or whatever podcatcher will let you. You can find me on Twitter at TQ Loudly, Ryan at Ryan underscore Albrecht Griffin at Griff Cold and Zach at that guy Zach Robb. We'll be back in two weeks with a new episode. And until then, remember that the answers you want won't always bring you comfort. This has been a Ghost Light Media production.